Welcome everyone to this session about deciphering the way data is tested, automate the movement, transformation, and visualization of data by Rajni Singh. We are glad that they can join us today. Without further delay, over to you, Rajni. Thank you. Uh, welcome everyone for your uh, participation in this session. So why uh, this topic, uh, uh, first of all, uh, this is very uh, privileged for APM um, conference to select my topic. However, uh, this is the uh, most uh, challenging thing which we can see and the uh, different uh, use cases currently. Uh, AI is there, big data, IoT. So uh, everything is dependent on data and how these data can be tested. So that is why we need to uh, test these data in a different way whether it's a normal data quality testing or we need to automate the movement, not only the ATL kind of, but automate the pipelining uh, thing. And uh, in batch processes or real uh, time processes, uh, is there any transformation, visualization? So uh, this topic will help you to understand how we can uh, do the different kinds of testing or different ways of testing or different use cases where data is involved. So if you can see some uh, with respect to uh, current technologies and the business requirement for the software development and the verification process, the testing team does not fully understand the implication of data on the design, the business, the configuration, operation, or the system and database. Because we uh, sometimes we do not uh, go beyond the front end or some back end activity is also there, but we do not understand about the business inside. Maybe, yeah. And the, based on the stats, the big data analytics market is set to reach by 103 billion by 2023. It's not uh, very far away from now. Internet user needs, uh, will generate about 2.5 quintillion of uh, bytes of data each day. And uh, about Google uh, gets over 3.5 billion of searches daily. Uh, Rati, data... sorry, sorry to interrupt. Would you mind moving the camera a little lower so that we can see your full screen? Okay. Yeah, much better. Thank you. And then, uh, uh, and these uh, data, bad quality data, what are the implications for, uh, and how it can impact you? So, based on the uh, Harvard Business Review, the study estimates that only 3% of, uh, of companies will meet the data, basic quality of data standards. And uh, you can see the 80 to 90% of uh, data we generate today is unstructured. Okay. And 95% of uh, business uh, site is need to manage the unstructured data uh, as a problem of the business. And some of the use cases where data is generated like uh, Internet of Things, there are sensors, there are actuators which is generating data and uh, uh, as a developer or a, uh, a technology people, they are uh, transforming, interpreting, processing those data and then visualization is there. And then big data is uh, again uh, uh, the application, big data application uh, has uh, lots of data. It can be uh, DB modeling you need to do, and in artificial intelligence of machine learning, it is all about uh, based on uh, the application, interpretation, the, uh, the product output all depends on the data, uh, what data goes in and what data goes out, and the ETL processes and the data migration uh, kinds of uh, testing. So um, uh, I'll also cover what all ETL, why it is different from uh, ETL and uh, data pipeline testing, what are the differences uh, with this. And uh, the first step as a tester and for any uh, data management plan is to test the quality of a data and identify some of the core issues that lead to poor quality. So tester needs to understand, to, uh, uh, has a clear plan to execute the test, but there are many new unknowns data systems are there, layered on top of your enterprise system. And the struggling with those data quality, added to those struggles, there are challenges in replicating and putting that information into the data analytics or predictive uh, software uh, there are, okay? So how you will measure? What are the quality of data? What are the dimension of data uh, on, on what uh, how these unstructured 
or gen uh, structured data generated uh, a statistical process how you can confirm highly concurrent system do not have a deadlock okay so what tool should we should use what are the different process and model what all needs to be tested which framework you should use. Uh, there are a uh, lot of uh, tools, library frameworks available. So we'll proceed with this, uh, uh, with the, what is data quality and how, what does it matter? So uh, there's no uh, specific definition of data quality that it gives you a limit uh, of the scope of a data quality. There are, however, there are benchmarks like it should be error-free, it should be complete or accurate, or it should be unique, and it should be uh, timely, it should not obsolete, that it should uh, exist today also. And uh, accurate, uniqueness, so these are the six uh, dimensions which you can uh, take care of by uh, 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 testing for the data. And uh, why these matter? Because if you do not um, get these data accurate, or con uh, consistent or complete, you can lose your business. You can, uh, there are direct me emails or marketing campaign which is uh, uh, run through the data only. So uh, there would be unnecessary cost there. And there are um, business decision on the flawed data can uh, give you uh, incorrect insight. So you need to understand. And to start uh, with the understanding, there are prerequisites of data quality testing. Uh, like first you need to know the purpose of your data and uh, what are the uh, data quality matrices you will follow and the metadata of your data feeds. So like uh, to proceed uh, to this, understand the volume of data, source of data, frequency of data, transition and types of data. Later in our business room, in which is applied, you can uh, use case for visualization. And there are two key uh, area of a testing problem is the est establishing the efficient test data set and availability of any SDFS kind of uh, uh, SDFS centric testing tool. So earlier it was not available. Now there are a lot of tools available, whether it's an open source or a commercial tool. However, um, no one, uh, no business is ready to use any open source uh, for uh, their data so that uh, it sh should not be vulnerable. So uh, these uh, tests include the data type validation, the range and constraint uh, validation, code and code uh, cross-reference validation is there, <coughs> and structured validation. Uh, you can achieve this uh, um, by adding an inbuilt coded solution. I will showcase one inbuilt coded solution which we have done for open. Uh, using open source tools like Kafka and uh, uh, Spark, Hadoop, and uh, Cassandra. And uh, manual validation is always there. You have to do uh, manual validations. And then open source library, which are available, which you can use in your uh, Python scripts or uh, you can use in your uh, scripts or Visual Studio code. So uh, there are automated uh, self-service tools are also there, and we'll talk about that. A rule-based engine are there, suggestion-based engine are there. However, what uh, before going to uh, how we can do, how it can be difficult to uh, test. Like there are not a lot of expertise. We can say there are libraries are there. How you you can use those libraries? The integration of tools. You need to know uh, the uh, processes like uh, 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 most of the time I face this issue uh, that uh, uh, developer or uh, uh, manager says that this is already automated if you have a pipeline it is already uh, automated and if you have any ETL kind of thing it is done through tool only so what is the use of uh, where QA uh, uh, where QA stays and where QA validate it's all uh, automated process. So what QA will do? It needs to be verified by the, uh, that pipeline only. So you do not know how you will test where you should go, uh, which page, which node, and which uh, which uh, which all uh, things you need to test. So uh, um, you need to identify what all uh, you need to test. You need to identify what all tools are there available, which is integrated. So for this, you, uh, there are five steps for better quality uh, data quality. So first process is the data discovery and profile. 
So what uh, actually data discovery and profiling? This is the first and foremost. So you need to understand what is the disc data discovery, how you are getting the data, uh, the collection of data, extraction of data. And if you find the source of truth, then how you do profiling? So um, uh, profiling is something that in your database or in your data source, there are spaces, there are uh, special character, null value, how this item should be displayed. So if you can see in this, uh, this uh, small, but there are tables which has uh, some space, underscore, a string, a character, and uh, uh, there are um, uh, lots of inconsistent structures are there, hashes is there, numbers are there. So how you can profile it. If you know your data, you can understand your uh, testing uh, much better. You can do a data testing uh, easier, easily. So first you need to understand uh, profiling of your data will help you to discover the data quality issue risk and overall challenges uh, which is uh, what is the trend of your data and how you can analyze and report your data uh, in a manner again uh, so uh, then standardizing and matching those data so how you can standardize so now data uh, discovery is done profiling of data is done uh, you know the uh, data um, uh, how, how your data pattern is what field, what column, what type of string, how your data displaying structure, not structure. Now you standardize those values and match with the in more incoming data and compare it, whether it's uh, there is a, some outlier or not. If I'm writing uh, employee ID somewhere in a table and some character is coming, uh, which is not expected. So you need to match with the new set of data. How you enrich after uh, standardizing all uh, you have an enrichment like same data can be used by other person uh, and can be enhanced by uh, other uh, user also uh, by you know uh, by taking those data in a JSON format they can publish it they can visualize it these kind of thing and particularly we create a, a services to share the particular piece of data they can uh, uh, connect with the API services and they can connect with the uh, data and monitoring uh, earlier uh, the how it is different uh, earlier monitoring is not required uh, in the initial or data phase now you need to have a monitoring part since starting of your requirement and when data is extracted only the, uh, then only you can uh, it's not that uh, data quality is not one and done operation it needs to be continuous ongoing and practices because the data in your organization is constantly transforming, shifting from and processing it. And those change needs to be monitored, whether there is an anomaly detection, uh, anomalies data are there, some outlier data is there. So uh, to ensure the quality uh, is maintained or not. Then operationalizing using these, uh, these data, the uh, monitored data, enriched data, enhanced data for visualization for business insight and all. So we talk about the data pipeline uh, uh, here. Uh, there are some uh, earlier uh, in earlier slide we can we talked about only about the data uh, which you can test, and this can be tested to various tools, various manual and automation tools are there. And um, data pipeline is something uh, like uh, uh, how we are using a water system. You need to go to some earlier in traditional uh, uh, traditional way. You need to go to some um, uh, well or some places, and you need to get the water. Now your uh, necessity increased that you need uh, water at home. You need more frequent water. You need water 24/7. You need to uh, so how it has improved the water system that you have created a pipeline and there are nodes where these pipeline the source of pipeline uh, water is connected and then uh, uh, pipeline is created like extraction of water is done and then there are processing of water some cleaning is done uh, in water and then uh, integration of pipeline that uh, one pipeline should go to one region one pipeline should go to another region so this is kind of data pipeline we are creating where so from extraction of data 
then processing of those data and then integration validation is done and then visualization. Now you can use those data as per your requirement. So each phase you need to uh, test uh, what all you need to test for data ingestion, that uh, creation, how data is created, uh, what is the source of truth, uh, uh, cleaning of data, what is the volume of data, frequency of data, throughput, and the variety of data, what are the formats uh, is there, and uh, ETL is a part uh, of testing here. It's a subset uh, of uh, a data pipeline and ETL. ETL is a subset of data pipeline testing. And you need to validate the reporting also. So where does QA role involve or step in? So there are data where you can do the duplicate missing outlier or format testing or there is a model whether it's a if this data pipeline you are creating for a data a database uh, testing or your application testing so there will be normal application uh, model testing db model will be created based on the schema and uh, the fraction dimension and then um, ai model is also created so uh, you need to test uh, your algorithm the overfitting, underfitting, biasness, fairness, how you can test those models, what is the accuracy, confidence, and co uh, uh, confidence, and um, the co uh, correlation thing, how it is responding you, is there any failover or not, and then model pipeline also, because a model which is created, it's also continuous process, with the new set of data, your uh, model is updated, so you need to update your version, which is called, uh, which is also uh, have a ML ops concept. So versioning of model is done. Then uh, if uh, we are enriching those uh, data, uh, there are API calls which we are using. So you need to test the API calls as well. And uh, if uh, you are in the, there is an interface or use cases for visualization, whether you are uh, adding some tool for visualization or you are creating your own visualization uh, interface, so you need to test all those use cases as well. So this is a one uh, in-house open source framework where we have used all the um, uh, open source tools. So there are two different forms of data which is coming, batch data and uh, batch data and the real-time data. So in case of batch data, it is easy. And you can say that if it is a batch data, we can do the extraction, transformation and load and then visualization testing also. But in real time, your processes needs to be running continuously. You need to continuously extract the data. You need to continuously stream the data add the business rule or transformation or processing and then uh, uh, storing those uh, transformed data into some database or uh, adding some log stash or elastic search so that you can visualize through Kibana or any uh, Power BI kind of tool uh, there. So uh, Kibana is open source here uh, currently. And uh, how uh, in this this is the flow which is uh, created by, by developer or your team members. So uh, as a tester, where you should test, what are the phases, what all the uh, stage, and what all you will test uh, uh, here. So what you need to test is that you need to test that source of data is coming correctly. My data is uh, the consumer. So here, uh, Apache uh, Kafka we, we have taken is the consumer open source data processing uh, engine, which acts as an intermediate of a streaming data pipeline. And it collects the data batch real time. Okay. And then Spark Stream is there. An extension of uh, course Spark Streaming we have used as a Spark API, where it helps to process the real time data from various. Um, various uh, sources and the structured streaming which deal with the data state, uh, sets and data frame API. Then the Spark engine, if you see here, is a, is a utilized here to perform uh, the necessary data validation uh, using configuration file. So whatever data processing or formatting or some business rule in uh, addition here uh, in configuration file, it is maintained. And then there is a batch of process data with, uh, through spark engine goes to store to cassandra it's a column oriented no sql database which is used to uh, handle large amount of data and real-time data with a high availability 
so there are also challenge with uh, cassandra is that um, uh, you get uh, not get the ad hoc request so you can add here as an alternative a root is there to for ad hoc reporting and and logstash is a code uh, component uh, of uh, elk stack which uh, helps you to uh, gather and process the data and gather the data with the uh, connecting with the elastic search and uh, with the kibana you can store this in a kibana so uh, there is a framework which is created and uh, this uh, this is a, a lot of uh, tools is required uh, for installation so uh, here you need a java 8 or spark kafka cassandra elk and jupyter notebooks that is why i have created a, a runbook here so that we can share with the uh, team and uh, um, we can create uh, um, this uh, framework and run your demo i will showcase uh, what all is required so this is a genetic data pipeline uh, uh, format uh, creation of design is there what all it is required how it can be implemented what all the uh, steps so first you need to start your zookeeper, then you need to start your Kafka, then you can create a topic and then send a message. So, and there is a Visual Studio code. So what I talked about is that you need to create a data model based on the, uh, here we have used key, key space DB where DB is connected or uh, data, you can uh, add data from uh, some file or connect DB. Uh, you can also add a clustering column, uh, which is a unique, whether you are taking a timestamp thing for real time processing, insert and update and instance also. So here we are, we are using a PySpa. You can also use any other processor. You can also use, uh, uh, instead of Kafka, you can use uh, AWS uh, services for streaming. You can use the uh, ADF, uh, also, ADF also, Azure Data Factory, and uh, Synapse uh, here. So you, you need to configure all these, uh, which all instances you are using in a tool. And this is a validation configuration where you are getting the column name, class, param. So how it is, uh, it is uh, not only getting the param, the classes, it is also validating uh, what is the uh, a validation and the requirement, what is required. So here uh, we have uh, identified that whether my product price is greater than 7,000 or not uh, here. You can see the, the uh, buying event is the CSP uh, we have kept here only so that it exe execute easily. We can keep it uh, anywhere and it will identify through relative part. And it is loading the, all the configuration instances and configuration data model. So this, uh, these are the in-house tools. Why we have created this in-house tool so that it cannot be, um, and your data is secure and safe and you can deploy in your uh, company or your project only. There are, uh, and um, it, it actually happened that um, yeah, till um, uh, yesterday night it was not working. I thought to rerun again and it was not working because some zookeeper issue which we uh, face um, most of the time for starting the server. So I thought uh, how I can do the alternative. So I got uh, another tool which is called um, Great Expectation. You can also see. So it's not a, a pipeline testing, but it's a data testing. Very uh, good tool. I'll uh, talk about and I'll give demo. So it was easy uh, as well. And uh, James, uh, Ben, and uh, Kyle, uh, they have a community channel uh, on a Slack. You can connect. So it took uh, not more than uh, 32. Uh, one hour, 30 minutes to one hour to understand that tool and you can be ready to use to is there. So if uh, someone is not able to deploy this uh, framework and also if this is, um, yeah, this needs a lot of installation process. Uh, just the benefit of this uh, framework is that your data is with you only and uh, it is secure and you can run, you can add as much as configuration, as much as validation you can. Uh, run here. So this is a Visual Studio code and there is a one Python script which is written in uh, Jupyter uh, which is uh, Kafka 
uh, it uh, it's import the uh, producer the topic which we have created and it runs so uh, morning uh, i have run it so all the data which is coming as a buying event it is giving me all the data which is uh, already there in that format so if you if i run uh, the elk the uh, the spark and kibana thank you uh, the spark kibana and uh, logstash so if you run you can see all those uh, here in We can create a package also, but this is in uh, development stage. Just a suggestion, Rajni Singh, maybe you can. Uh... Answer the question live so that it helps other people also. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much uh, for suggestion. So here, if you run this code, it will uh, give you all the uh, processing of how Kafka is producing and uh, application has started. You can see all data is coming, and it will save all those data, and it should come in the uh, Kibana. So sometimes live does not work. So it is running right now. Once it is saving is completed, then it will share. So apart from this, uh, uh, what I talk about is uh, the great expectation tool. So here in this framework, it will take uh, some time to run, execute, and a lot of uh, settings are required. A word with a great expectation, it gives you the package. You can run, uh, just uh, add two, three uh, steps are there. Just you need to install and run. I'll showcase both. So it's, uh, uh, for ML ops uh, the, uh, or the poor data quality, uh, it's uh, very uh, difficult to test it. Go to CMD, command prompt, right? What is this? It is installed. You need to start it. Another uh, step is great. Initial. So now this tool will ask which file and how you are. now it has started. So if you want to do a notebook, you can check the expectation. You can add a checkpoint also. There is a plugins also, and there are. Uh, uh, it will save in uncommitted. So it asks me whether I like to uh, configure the data source. So uh, either you can add it to uh, SQL Server, you can use either file or relational database uh, uh, already there. And if I give one option for file, and I can give PySpark or Pandas, PySpark is already there on my system, so I can add two. So uh, now it is asking for path where my uh, uh, this uh, file is I can give and download. I have my file now. Oh, which short name I can ask the demo test? Yes,
the file name which we are and need to give and this will give you the uh, html report with all details you can see the result expected expectation validation result so evaluated the expectation it has successful expectation all eight columns were there in that file i'll showcase that file also and uh, it's equal to uh, 2200 rows uh, what it has observed how it has uh, checked it and whether any of the values are null or not you can add many checkpoints you can add many checkpoints so this it will give you so if you want to uh, see all the things or any failed one so there is no fail it has succeeded you can edit also this is great expectation uh, thing and how it works you can walk walk through also you can add more checkpoints here so i have i run only the basic test of one file which is comparing matching and doing the testing and what all it tests is that it tests all the uh, uh, so it, it it tests all the functions like table search is there or etl kind of testing distributional function multi columns are there or not expected uh, column max uh, between uh, is there or uh, aggregate functions are there on date and time or JSON, whatever formatting, date, time, aggregate functions, string matching, sets or range or table spaces, missing value, duplicate value. So whatever the validation point, which I write in a configuration file. So how, uh, why this session would be important for uh, anyone is that they can create they get some idea that you need to create some data validation thing. You need to add some validation uh, uh, function or a, a, a module and where you can compare with the incoming data source and any processing of those data and then target data. And if there is any use cases also. So um, it, this will give you a quick solution. Uh, and this will also give you the um, uh, um, ways to uh, understand and uh, replicate uh, testing of your data, uh, which is there uh, with you. Okay, so another, another we have uh, talked about all the uh, things, uh, all the um, data which is static. And now we'll talk about what if integrating these data in data validation in ML pipeline. So in uh, machine learning also, there are a uh, pipeline which is uh, also carry a lot of data. So here, first we will define the matrices which we will follow, which uh, framework or model which we are taking, and we add all those data, transform those data, and build a model. So now, if your model is deployed, so most of uh, this is also very uh, conflicting uh, debate which is going on that uh, how um, a Scrum or any uh, agile methodology or any software development, traditional development life cycle can help machine learning to uh, develop 100% because 50% only it is developed by developers. Now 50% is trained by uh, data scientists uh, after uh, helping with the after getting response from a real user or after getting uh, tested uh, from a crowd tester or real user who they are using then assessing those models based on the real-time data and uh, monitoring continuously monitoring all those data continuously deploying the model assessing those models what is the accuracy what is the confidence level what is the um, confidence and the accuracy or uh, precision or any fallback is there so you need to test. So for this, uh, and uh, if uh, someone says that 
uh, uh, machine learning is very difficult and uh, uh, how data is important in machine learning. So if you, uh, there is a, on Google, there is a certain uh, hidden technical depth. So this is a, uh, again a white paper which is already written. So in machine learning, uh, there is a small uh, machine learning code is there. Uh, apart from that small code, everything which is uh, here is the data ingestion, feature extraction from data, data verification is there, monitoring of data, analysis of data, configuration of your services or tools which you are using our uh, infrastructure. So uh, the ML thing is very less. And how we can test it? There are uh, There is a tool which is available by uh, Google, which is called uh, TensorFlow, uh, T, uh, TensorFlow Data Validation uh, uh, Library, which is there, and you can test it. So it's a scalable calculation. You can get an integration of viewers, and also TensorFlow uh, board is giving you the performance, scalability, and security kind of thing. So this is the again a big topic which uh, uh, we can cover uh, maybe um, in other session which I have given uh, the AI thing. So there we have covered the TensorFlow data validation thing and uh, how we can test AI application. Uh, this kind of it gives you the automated data schema. It gives you schema viewer anomaly detection. So uh, you can write a code in Python for anomaly detection, or you can use a cloud.io where you can upload your data or uh, you connect your data and it gives you all the anomaly detection, outlier detection. So it can be done within five minutes. So what is the chances and uh, the source of error? Maybe uh, for a model, whether it's a DB model or a ML model, you have a uh, Sometimes uh, by developing, you do not have a sufficient data, or maybe your data is uh, inaccurate or invalid. So how you will represent those data? Sometimes if we try to create a data, it created by, uh, there is a biasness. If I think that I can create a pre uh, prerequisite that a data creation is there, so it may be I'm using only uh, my prospects, so data biasness would be there. And uh, apart from that, security is very important here. Integration of a with machine interface is important. And uh, technology problem, like lots of uh, tools integration is required. And uh, sometimes we do not have that expertise with the tool. It, it takes uh, time to understand. And um, earlier, we also faced this, that we have deployed a model, we shared and uh, published it. but with the next set of data our model uh, deteriorated so how uh, we can identify all this by continuous monitoring continuous performance issue identifying scalability of data and then maintaining the model version so that in case uh, a model version and also there is an important concept here is that you create a shadow development environment which is not staging but uh, it's a production rep mirror image kind and it is not visible to develop uh, users, the front end user. You, they just create, uh, get all the, extract the data of a real time user and then uh, do the analysis and then to do all the uh, performance scalability and versioning of model. And then it can be validated, updated model can be published through staging and then uh, uh, to production. So there is Thanks. a shadow. Five minutes. Mm -hmm. Sure. So there are some Python uh, libraries which are already uh, available. Uh, we also take uh, took reference from Cerberus uh, uh, library, and uh, these are some of the smart comparison data set uh, in, import you can do, validate you can do. So benefit you can see the whatever loss we have uh, seen uh, earlier, you can benefit from using testing. You can benefit it from, and monitoring is the uh, most important uh, part which is continuous. So what all you need to monitor? The processes, the visualization, and you need to add an alert and notification for your application or model. So these are the data changes, model performance, of CPU or model input checks are there. Visualization, so I don't know if that was executed or not, but it will come like this. Do we have some time for questions, Sajin? Yes, yes, we have. 
So any can uh, ask a question because uh, this is the tool which is already available in market and anyone can use uh, Talent Open Studio DQ Great Expectation is another. Great. I encourage participants to uh, post their questions in the Q and A section so that as we can answer them straight away. So a report will come in Kibana and for a, a great expectation it would be uh, there in the, the file. <laughs> The HTML file. Actually, this. So these are the folder which is created, checkpoints which you have added. What all expectation means validation you have added. If you have added any code, uh, customized code, you can add here, and uh, the plugins which can uh, we can add here. So because it is uh, uh, supporting Airflow, Apache, uh, Airflow, and all, and uh, the file validation file is. Uh, Tested here, saved here in JSON format, also in um, HTML format. Also, I have a question, Rajni. This is a great talk, by the way. Just mm -hmm. wanted to, uh, uh, you know, understand what would be a recommendation for a team that has zero testing for their data. What would be their uh, first initial, uh, you know, step that they should take towards uh, testing their data? Initial testing uh, should be done uh, first. Uh, profiling is very important. Uh, so if you understand your data, you understand what quality validation would be, be done and uh, what business insight from that data can be uh, incurred. Nice. Any other okay. question um, available at LinkedIn or Twitter? Uh, so you can connect with me.